Welcome, I'm Jeff Moss, and it's my privilege and honor to introduce you to the first ever Military Cyber Professionals Conference, short named HammerCon. Pretty intimidating name, but I'm sure you'll find a lot of interesting and friendly people at the conference. I mean, we cyber guys are pretty outgoing and we're pretty open to new ideas. Hopefully, we'll expose you to some of them right now. Um, I wish I was there in person, but I'm trapped on the other side of the world and I just couldn't make it in. Instead, I've got a couple of stories for you and just a couple of thoughts, and then we'll kick it off. Okay, ready? So, what am I doing talking to a bunch of cyber professionals, military, ex-military, when I'm just a hacker? I haven't done military service. Now I've done national, uh, donated a lot of my time to the national interests, but not in an official capacity really besides maybe DHS. So, what, what, why is a hacker really talking to you? And I would say it's for a couple of reasons. One, hackers love the military industrial complex as portrayed in a lot of the movies. I mean, they always have the best technology, the AIs are always running off and trying to take over the world, and the hackers are always saving the day. Um, and for me, a lot of that started with the movie War Games. A lot of the same themes we see today. And the thing that really inspired me about War Games was the lone person scanning the network, finding something, and going down this sort of rabbit hole, and then saving the world. When I started DEF CON, um, I didn't have a very negative perception of the military or feds in general. Everybody knew you had to sort of hide from them because they're going to try to bust you if you were hacking computers. But really, that was kind of abstract. Um, so, for the very first DEF CON, I called up the Secret Service. Actually, I sent them a fax, because <laughs> that's what you did back then. So I faxed them an invite, and I said, hey, um, we're doing this hacking conference, and um, I figure if feds are going to be there anyway, why don't you just come along? And I sent this fax, and I got no response. Time went by, weeks went by, and finally I thought, you know what, I'm just going to call them. So I, I call up the special agent in charge in uh, Las Vegas. <laughs> Operator puts me through. And I have this whole spiel ready to go. Hey, you know, I'm Jeff Moss. I sent you this fax. We're doing this hacking conference. I want you to be there. And uh, the other end of the line is really quiet for a while, like this big pregnant pause. We are aware of your activities. <laughs> and then he pauses and starts laughing a little bit. And he says, no, thanks for the invite, but we can't make it. Um, sounds like you want somebody to talk about policy and where enforcement and just you know, maybe reach out to somebody in the Department of Justice, but thanks. So DEF CON 1 happens, the show is over, I'm hanging out, and somebody comes up to me. All quiet and sneaky-like, moves his jack to the side, shows me a Secret Service badge. I was like, aha, I knew you guys were going to be here. He said, yeah, you know, we're just here to check it out, but not to talk or anything. I'm like, okay. And I think what happened is that sort of friendly beginning set the tone of the interaction between what turns out to be or will turn into be the largest hacking conference in the world and the feds. And that we both know we're there, we both sort of respect each other, and we accept each other. So now DEF CON 2 rolls around. Now we start paying attention. What's going on? Same thing. End of the show, somebody comes up to me, says, hey, you know, I'm a Fed. It's like, oh, I knew there were more here than just, so who are you with? So oh, I'm with the DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency. What are, you, what are you guys doing here? That's like counting typewriters in Russia to see if there's more prolific writers or something. Like, what, what are you doing? He said, well, actually, I'm trying to figure out if other agencies and other governments are recruiting hackers. So how, how are you doing that? Said, well, what I do is I sit at the side of the room and I look for other people looking for other people. I'm trying to watch the watchers and see who's doing that. Fascinating. Now we're at DEF CON 3. Now we have a for real I spotted the Fed contest and we've got our eyes out. Now we know what to look for. Penny loafers, butt packs, whatever. We've got our antennas tweaked. And at the end of the conference, somebody comes up, Ken, um, who turns out to be a good friend later on in life. And Ken said, I'm working at the NSA. 
I'm a fed. Can I get the shirt? And I said, sure, but I need to get a picture. So I got a picture of the back of Ken wearing the I am the fed shirt. And over the years, we stayed in touch and he proposed if it was okay to borrow the DEF CON name and use it for an internal NSA capture the flag event they were holding. I said, thanks for asking. You could have just done that on your own um, without you ever telling me. How would I know? And, uh, and it was really interesting, the ideas that would flow back and forth. So what I guess I'm getting at is there's a lot of friendships and interconnectedness between uh, the different communities, the creativity, the desire to understand how things work. Um, I think in your community, you have a, a more of a hands-on, practical, sort of applied approach where you need to get stuff done. The mission calls for certain outcomes, and you're going to make it happen. Um, with the freeform hacking, it's more maybe intellectual, the creativity and the discovery. But hopefully, conferences like HammerCon will help recharge you, get you looking at problems from a different angle, more like a hacker maybe. Um, because when you're unconstrained that way, it, it unlocks different modes of thinking. Now, some of my final thoughts. We're entering a new world. And, and people like to say that. I know I like to say that a number of times. But truly, we are. Um, mostly driven by the accelerated change of the Russian-Ukrainian invasion, but also by some other things happening. One, we have super-empowered individuals, I would say also companies, massive superscalar, hyperscalar companies, um, and also groups like, say, Conti. These companies, groups, and individuals have outsized influence. If you're the maintainer of a package that has 50 million dependencies or something, um, you're a powerful person whether you accept it or not. Uh, if you're a Conti or you're a, a huge hyperscaler and you can influence half the desktops on the planet, you have outsized influence. And from my perspective, you need to use those influences for good because you're closest to the levers of power that can make the change. And if you don't, um, you're making it hard on everybody else. And you're going to run into these groups one way or the other. They just control and influence too much uh, of the infrastructure. Uh, second, I'd also say that there's this in, uh, increasing awareness or desire for a public-private sort of strategic partnership between the government and the private sector, not just in the United States, but, but everywhere. Uh, and I would say that is because global problems and internet problems are related. You can't solve one with the other, and you can't solve it purely in a governmental level without the public, public partnership. So that means you're going to be working with cloud providers. You're going to be working um, with other governments, other certs in other countries. If you're trying to get something done, you're going to have a lot of partners. And I think this is more of an acknowledgement where before it sort of just happened, but now it's going to happen uh, intentionally uh, to a greater degree because this is what's going to take to get solutions. And then finally, um, a benefit and a hazard, we are in the golden age of open source intelligence. I mean, just look at the work uh, that Bellingcat is doing in Ukraine, revealing Russian war crimes. Uh, it's, what it's discovered is uh, certified to be used in uh, the UN. So that can make your job harder, make your job easier. Uh, there's other organizations like Bellingcat, organizations like Citizen Lab out of Ontario, where they're doing research against uh, NSO and other embedded uh, spyware but they're really telling a story about what's going on behind the curtains, who the power players are, their CNC infrastructure, what tools they're using. This is going to be really useful to you. You have to be aware of this new uh, community of operators in your space. Okay, so with that said, I really wish you the best of luck. I wish the conference the best of luck, and I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but Next year, for sure, I'll try my hardest to be there. So with that said, all the best. Enjoy the con.